Hey, what's up guys? My name is Brian and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about torque wrenches and how torque wrenches work. Now, I was prepping for an upcoming video reviewing this half inch Ulsa split beam torque wrench and it got me thinking about how torque wrenches work and exactly how the different styles of torque wrenches work. So, decided to make this video. As you can see, I've pulled an old click style torque wrench apart. We're gonna take a look at that. But before we do, we're gonna talk about the different styles of torque wrenches real quick. We have a beam torque wrench, which I don't have here to show you, but all it is, as you can see, is a torque wrench with a scale on it that once it's reached a certain torque, it will move the indicator to that on the handle. Now we also have a dial gauge torque wrench, which works similar to the beam torque wrench. It just moves the dial instead. Once the handle's reached a certain torque, it will move that indicator to show you, show you how much torque you're applying to that fastener. So we'll move to the split beam torque wrench. And as I said, I'm gonna be having a review coming up on this. If you're interested in it, I'm gonna link it below. It's an Ulsa Tools half inch split beam torque wrench. But the way this torque wrench works is there's just a little dial that you move on the side and that dial will move to your desired torque. And there's a long beam and a short beam inside and a trigger. And once that's reached a certain torque, it will click giving you an indication that you've reached your torque specification. Now, there's cons and pros to each one of these, but we're not gonna get into that this video. I'll get more into that in the next video. But next we'll move to the digital torque wrench. Now your digital torque wrenches are obviously a little bit more technologically advanced than your other click style, split beam, beam, dial indicator torque wrenches. These, a lot of them will give you the ability to not only measure in foot pounds, but also in angles, which is a pretty big necessity for anyone working on vehicles, especially newer vehicles, because a lot of torque specifications will be to angles and not just to foot pounds. So those are pretty important for anybody wanting to work on any type of newer automobiles or even a lot of your older automobiles. It allows you to put a more accurate torque down on your fastener. But the way these work is there's actually a transducer inside and you'll set your specified torque using a digital display. You set that torque and that transducer actually converts the pressure to an electrical signal. And once the desired electrical signal is reached, your torque wrench, depending on your type of digital torque wrench, will give you an indication, whether it be a beep, a buzz, or a light, as you see here with the Mako digital torque wrench that I have. This is a more upscale torque wrench. This actually gives you three different indications to when you're approaching and you've reached your torque. The lights actually flash green, yellow, red, red once you hit your torque, green once you're getting close, closer, yellow once you're almost there, just like a traffic light. And also once you reach your torque, it gives you an audible beep and the handle buzzes. So there is three different ways to indicate to you that you've reached your desired torque. But as I said, all it is, is once your desired electrical signal has been reached that you put into the digital display, then it alerts you that you've reached your torque. Then we'll come to the click style torque wrench. And there's different types of click style torque wrenches, more expensive torque wrenches, just like with any type of tool. But we can see here a snap on one and this is a more higher end torque wrench. It's an older torque wrench, but it is a higher end torque wrench. And we can also see here that I've broke apart a torque wrench, a little cheap torque wrench, and there's gonna be a lot of different kinds, but this is just gonna give us a general idea about how this works. And we can see that there's a lock at the bottom and that lock simply works by screwing this in. You screw this in, it hits a screw, and it stops you from being able to move your torque wrench by turning the handle but when you're turning this handle, what you're actually doing is you're increasing the force on a spring and they measure what the force is at a certain point with this spring being compressed. And that spring in turn pushes this up into your handle. And there's a little cube that will actually push into the handle. And once the desired torque has been met, that this handle will actually slip off of this. And that's what creates your audible click when you're using this. So that's why it's pretty big with these click style torque wrenches. You have to unscrew them, put them to zero because you want to relieve the tension off of this spring. 
because if you've got it compressed all the time, banging it around, then it's gonna force it to go out of spec a lot quicker than if you was just to put it down to zero, take care of it. So with these types of tools, you could buy some cheaper ones and they will work, but especially with the click digital style torque wrenches, you need to take care of them. These are a little, you can be a little bit more rough on these, which we'll talk about in the video when I do the review on that, but the digital and these, you need to keep them in the case, avoid banging them up, unscrew these completely with the digital style torque wrench. Obviously you don't have to relieve any pressure on it, but you want to keep that, especially something like the Mako tools one we see there. It's a pretty expensive torque wrench. So you want to try to take good care of it, keep it in the case, try to keep it in spec as long as possible. A lot of people will have their torque wrenches recalibrated every year, which is what you should do, especially if you own an expensive type of torque wrench that you're keeping around. Now, when it comes to the split beam and beam style, those do not need to be calibrated like these other torque wrenches need to be calibrated because there's less moving parts in them. So I just thought it was pretty interesting. I took this apart and I thought I'd share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you already knew this, let me know down in the comments. If you didn't know, let me know down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, I hope you consider subscribing to my channel because I'll be doing more videos like this, including project tips, tool reviews, and more. I appreciate y'all watching. Until next time, stay real.